Well, this is the council's work here, and this is where they've been taking all of the water in the ground, taking it out, and as you can see, all of the intake inlet water to this lake is dried up, and that is part of the reason what has polluted the lake. There's a mangrove jack that would have to be at least five or six, maybe seven years old. ...to accept the council's line on what's caused the huge fish kill at Beachmere, and they have a marine expert on their side who says the problem is a council construction site. Day two of this environmental tragedy and the disaster gets worse. Fish fighting for survival in the oxygen-starved lake. By mid-morning, hundreds of dead fish again littered the normally pristine lake. It's so sad to see these fish just floating around. With the massive council clean-up expected to last weeks, residents' sadness has turned to anger. It's shocking what's going on here, environmental shocking. Residents now wanting answers, not satisfied with Moreton Bay Regional Council's explanation of recent heat and a lack of oxygen in the water. But this construction is what residents and experts say has caused the fish kill. The most incredible thing is happening. We have the Mayor, Alan Sutherland, and the fellow that is the councillor there, Christopher Whiting. And we've got these people in the EPA still maintaining that it was hot days, temperature and lack of oxygen that killed the fish. They still won't admit that it is through their actions that this whole vandalism of the habitat is their fault. Now when it comes to the management of healthy marine life, some people, some academics might poo-hoo what system we have chosen to use and we could use a high-tech system if we wanted to. But let me show you something. This is something that would be used, or this kind of procedure would be used in a laboratory all over the world, in every university, and particularly in every aquarium and every pet shop. And it's as simple as this. This is a system system that measures the ammonia. That's the nitrite, nitrate in the water, because this is what kills marine life. Now, if you don't believe me, get a check out talk to a million professors, you'll find that it is the ammonia that's going to kill the marine life. And the marine life in this lake, the ammonia came through to the lake out of the actions of the council, putting into the lake all of that substrate water, which was absolutely putrid and filthy and full of hydrogen sulfide. That is the cause of the toxins going into the lake. And now I'm going to show you what is the result of testing the water. And I will use a friend of mine, Phil Casey, that I've known for 50 years. He was in the marine industry back in the 1959-60s area. And he's still in that particular business. And he's an expert when it comes to keeping and maintaining healthy marine life. Now in a moment or two, I'm going to show you the samples of the water that we've brought back from the Beachmere Lake and we're gonna test it in front of the camera. Now I've chosen to do this testing with a gentleman that I've known for many years, Phil Casey. Phil and I have been in the marine world since what, 1959 or something. Uh, so we've done a lot together in the management of marine life. Now I've chosen Phil Casey to do this. We could have gone to an independent laboratory, but there's one thing I want to just say to the people. You can get two kinds of scientific reports for this. You can get the ones that the government are going to use because they want to prop up the jobs of the government employees. That will be a false report. We're going to give you one that is natural, which is honest, and we don't need to cheat because we know how to maintain healthy marine life. And if this gentleman here doesn't know how to, to maintain healthy marine life, what he's been doing it for what? How many years? 50 years. So let's have a look now what we're going to show you and we'll test it in front of you. Now Phil, let's take that first bottle. Will you open that first bottle because we'll do a test on that. That was the uh, bottle or sample of the water that was given to us by Denise. So let's do that one first. Okay. This is an ammonia test. Are we doing now a, a test on the ammonia, the nitrites and nitrates? Well, we'll go with the ammonia because it's the most toxic. 
Okay. The others are immaterial. But if we make this four times the volume. And uh, these are standard aquarium test kits as used by thousands of hobbyists. Made in Australia, fairly accurate. But if you can't keep the fish alive. So this would be vital information to anybody that wanted to maintain healthy marine life. These test kits are used every day by hundreds of hobbyists throughout Australia. And they right. depend now, on this to keep their fish alive. Now that water that you're now testing, that has to stand for a few minutes. This, so just, we'll come back to that. We're just mixing reagent A. Yes. We'll then put in reagent B, and that's the one that's got to stand for 10 minutes. So now we leave that stand for a few moments. All right. Wait for a few moments for that to uh, reach the level. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that. Now, Phil, what's the result there? I can see that you're ready to uh, tell us what's happened there. Well, first off, we made the test much larger than required, so that you can see it clearly on the camera. We're testing for ammonia. Ammonia is probably the most toxic element that we strike in aquariums. pH and all the other things are relevant, but ammonia is the killer. This is way, way outside of so the, the color, acceptable level. Right. The and color that, of that testing uh, seems to have gone off the scale is, to the right where it is well, it's deadly. It is larger than this equipment can measure. So what would have been the result for the fish that are living in that environment? Irreversible damage leading to death. Even if they were taken out quickly, they would still die. Because they're full of toxins. Yeah. And, and the, the physical damage to the fish is gross. And what would be the only remedy, if there's a remedy, for yeah. that lake? Time. Nature taking its may take its course and flush out the water. It. Yep. Flush out the water? Yeah, yeah. That, that would be the optimal solution. And if it's been closed off to the sea, because this is salty water, it should be open and let the sea water flush it out. So re-oxygenating and blowing bubbles in the water would no have effect. absolutely no effect. No. And um, they yeah. at the moment at the moment they they are blowing oxygen bubbles or compressed air into the water, would that have any effect? Make the the operators feel good because they think they're doing something. Won't help the fish at all. Wouldn't help the fish at all, or the marine life. The damage is done. Thank you, Phil. Okay, now, Phil, what is your conclusions? Without a doubt, the fish killer in this case is the high ammonia levels. The other factors contribute temperature, lack of oxygen, but it's the ammonia that kills the fish makes the fish unable to assimilate the oxygen that is there and the stress. Thanks, Phil. Thanks. Well, you've just seen the result. Now, let me tell you something more. Yes, we tested the uh, parts per million. We, we tested the specific gravity and we also tested the pH. And yes, the pH was from 6 up to about 7.4. But let me tell you something also. The pH should be 8.2 8 or 8.4. So the pH was very, very low. This is normal though when you have a lot of deirdrous matter rotting down. We tested the parts per million and yes, it was 1.12 and up to 1.22, 1.23. Now let me tell you something, that is normal seawater. So there's no problem there. But they'd like to bamboozle you with their scientific ya, ya, ya. That's not the problem. We've shown you here that the ammonia nitrite nitrate and the hydrogen sulfide, the level is off the planet. It was that high and that is caused by the council.
that is man-made. That is what killed all of this lake. And as you just heard my friend tell you, the only way out of this problem is to flush that lake out because that toxin will remain in there for a long period of time. And one by wit, one by one, wave by wave, more fish are going to die, but the worst thing is going to happen, we will have birds that will eat these fish and they will die too.